Well, time now to take you through the Sunday papers. With us to review them today are Sharon Daliwal and Thomas Copeland. So a very good morning to both of you. Good to see you both. Um, and uh, as usual with the Sundays, plenty around. Sharon, we want to kick off, don't we, with the, the front of the Sunday Telegraph. And uh, Rishi Sunak has um, done an interview for uh, the paper, and he's talking about his plans on immigration. And both candidates in this uh, Conservative leadership race talking tough on this issue. Yes. Um, hi. Thank you for having me on this. Um, yes, I want to talk about Rishi Sunak. Um, it's a really interesting kind of narrative that's being spun at the moment that I've noticed uh, with a lot of uh, South Asian uh, conservative um, MPs. So we have Rishi Sunak, we have Priti Patel, um, and there's a, a, a few a few other people as well. Um, it's a really interesting conversation that's being had about immigration when we're very aware about their immigration status, their family's immigration status, uh, to then lead the way for um, creating more of a, a hostile environment. Uh, for people that need to seek refugee, for example, um, and especially when there's war, like ongoing war in the world, you know, whether it is with uh, Ukraine and Russia or what's been happening in Syria or like uh, Palestine, there is a constant need for um, uh, an easier route for people to come into uh, safer spaces. Um, and so people like Rishi Sunak, uh, I feel, are causing that kind of difficulty, are causing more difficulties for people who are just seeking help. Um, and there's this kind of rhetoric as well uh, with this claim that people are coming to steal jobs or benefits or uh, things like that. Um, and the reality is, is a lot of people don't really know about the political climate. They don't really understand how the benefit system works. They're coming for refugee status. Um, and it's kind of, it's it's very difficult to read these kind of things. I, I don't think it's a positive thing that Rishi Sunak is uh, uh, stating to have a cap on refugee numbers um, or any of the uh, Conservative Party rhetoric on immigration so far has been incredibly negative. Thomas, what, what do you make of this? Both candidates are saying that they want to try and make the Rwanda asylum scheme work, don't they? And one of the arguments they would put forward for that is they say they want to try to deter people making those dangerous crossings uh, across the channel. And there are people who will be sympathetic to, to their tough line on immigration and have concerns about numbers. Well, it's very well worn argument at this stage about you know the ethical underpinning of that Rwanda policy, the practical implications of it. The argument has always been exactly as you said that the way it was the way to crack down on the kind of people trafficking operation um, uh, between the Calais and, and and that coast of France across the United Kingdom. I mean, right now the reason that it's on the front of the papers is because Rishi Shunak is kind of throwing some red meat. I think to Tory party members, he's got about a 10% deficit to make up onto the polls. He's come out of the gates with this you know, claim. It's one that essentially, uh, as far as I can see, is just based on saying, well, I support the policy that's been enacted up until now. You imagined he would have insofar as he was chancellor for an extended period of time when that policy was being rolled out and has defended it publicly, so indeed has Liz Truss. So in, in terms of the sense of this being something new and significant, a new policy announcement, announcement to throw to Tory MPs, it's it's not one that's probably going to stack up, but it's certainly one that a lot of the, the voters in, in, in the Tory leadership campaign will want to see. They, you know, they care a lot about immigration. The polling adds up to that an awful lot in terms of the big issues that affect or are important in the lives of um, the, the people who are voting in this upcoming campaign, um, notwithstanding all the ethical considerations that Sharon's thrown in there. Um, the immigration has been not really the big issue of this campaign up until now. I suppose some of the briefings of, over this weekend are likely to mean that it will be the big issue. W what has been the big issue up until now is what's on the front of the Observer today, which is tax and the economy. Yeah, let's um, turn to that, uh, shall we? Because um, uh, the Observer, the, it's the second story here that you particularly want to focus on, isn't it? And this is Thatcher Minister's turn on trust over tax cut plans. And as you say, when the, when the leadership contest was first launched, a lot of the focus was on... Um, the difference between the candidates' policies on tax. So, so what's the Observer saying here? 
Well, yeah, you're starting to see this campaign broadening out, you know, immigration coming in, HS2 is on the front of the Telegraph as well, but tax and the economy are going to be really fundamental. Sunak has stood out till, up until now, uh, aside from the other candidates, he's trying to portray himself as the responsible, the sensible choice. Read my lips, no new tax cuts seems to be the way that he's moving. You've got this morning some lots of conservative infighting, it's only going to get worse. This weekend, uh, Richie Sunak calling Liz Truss's tax plans immoral, then Simon Clark, who is Chief Secretary of the Treasury worked under Sunak saying that Rishi Sunak was peddling um, Project Fear. Nice to have that one coming back into the headlines. Project Fear over saying, you know, that Liz Truss's tax plans didn't add up. The story the Observer has is about three uh, Thatcherite um, ministers, Chris Patton, uh, Norman Lamont and uh, Malcolm Malcolm Rifkind, um, essentially roundly criticising Liz Truss. Their basic argument is that there's no point cutting taxes if you've got a deficit and then you're going to fund that deficit through borrowing and especially don't touch, uh, touch uh, tax cuts if you're in the period of inflation. Now the camp, the, the Liz Truss camp says, oh, well, we can't get growth in order to, 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 to close that deficit without tax cuts. But what you've got here is kind of this blue on blue fighting is now turning intergenerational. You've got that right ministers coming back. You're likely to see this only get worse and worse. Sunak has about a 10% deficit to make up in the polls. So in terms of the kind of na na slight nastiness of the campaign, it's only going to get worse as he tries to make up that ground. And these kind of attacks on, on Liz Truss and also throwing a bit of red meat to the back, uh, you know, to Tory members are likely to um, to, to, to feature a lot more in the headlines. What kind of an impact it has for three Thatcherite ministers to criticise uh, Liz Truss tax plans in terms of the Tory members actually voting? I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that it's going to be a really effective strategy to make people say, oh, actually, you know, Sunak's the man for me. But certainly it's evidence of ongoing Conservative infighting. Yeah, OK. And, and meanwhile, at the Sunday Express, Sharon, um, has Boris Johnson um, basically... Uh, spelling out his legacy as he sees it and uh, he gives himself um, the thumbs up I think he definitely does um, I can't imagine him really writing anything where he doesn't um, but it's a really interesting piece that he, he put together over here um, where he talks about the public in a very negative light um, and we see him talking about people as Romaniacs Ramonas and rejoiners um, classing people as um, the woke group of people and it's a very kind of like it feels a bit like a, a bitter ex-wife talking about you know the late husband it's just a very strange kind of way of like facing what's happening um, and facing kind of like you know the change that's happening with him as well um, and it's it's very I, I read the whole piece myself and it was very difficult to read because he spends the whole time talking about his accomplishments of which there are very few um and so the article is indeed very very small um and he talks about um he makes very big statements you know we took back control of our money we took back control of our borders um and so a line like that doesn't quite make sense with again what um Rishi Sunak, uh, for example, is now saying, whereas we need to take more control. So it's it's a very kind of conflicting message that he's sending out here. Um, and also, it kind of is a very bitter, almost goodbye, um, which doesn't really shine him in a better light, if that's what he was hoping to do. Well, yes, I mean, one of the headlines they pick out on the front page, uh, Thomas, is uh, time and again, we got the big calls right. That, that, that's what he would say. We got Brexit done and the vaccine rollout was a huge success. So two of his, his big mantras. Well, exactly. And I suppose the thing I say, just adding on what Sharon said, it's, it's, an, it's ironic often that Boris Johnson is among the first to lambast against identity politics and yet moving into this position of sort of labelling people as Ramoners and rejoiners and, and the woke tends to fall actually into sort of an unusual form of identity politics in itself. I mean, listen, Boris Johnson's legacy is something that will be debated um, ad nauseum over the coming years. I'm actually inclined to think, and again, uh, not 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 any particular comments on, on, on how successful any of these policies are or were, I'm inclined to think that his legacy will probably be a, be a relatively positive one, certainly in the eyes of his own voters. I think you've got, um, you know, a not an insignificant number of um, Tory members who are now looking at the two choices that are on offer to them between Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss and thinking to themselves, oh, did the Tory MPs do the right thing? Um, I, I think Boris Johnson will have to lean very heavily on this kind of mantra again of I got Brexit done. 
lot of people here in Northern Ireland were questioning whether that sentence makes really much sense, you know, considering the sort of ongoing negotiations about what Brexit is, and indeed seems to be undone, as Sharon said, by a lot of the rhetoric you got from the likes of what Penny Morton, let's get Brexit redone, um, Rishi Sunak, let's make Brexit, Brexit safe. Okay. Um, Thomas, you know, I'm so of... sorry, I'm going to have to cut in here just because we're running out of time, but we are going to see you both in the next hour. So Thomas and Sharon, for the moment, thanks both very much indeed. Top stories next.